So we are here in Amsterdam at the third day of the Inspire to Live conference. And this morning, there was a surprise for you because you were rewarded with the hero of cancer. Did you expect anything? No, I didn't. I came from Nairobi this week, just coming to join forces with everybody to talk about the things we are doing and the things we can do. I did not expect to win anything, to be awarded anything. So when I first heard that, I thought I was dreaming. And then I it looked again to see if it was about me or some other person with a name like mine. But it was you. It was me. So it was a great surprise yes. uh, and a pleasant honor. And what does it mean to you? It means everything. You know, when we work in our own small countries, in our sm own small corners, you are so overwhelmed by what you're doing. You do not do it for somebody to recognize you. You do it because it is work to be done. So just doing that on its own without being awarded anything is good, is excellent. But to hear that it is being recognized elsewhere is just out of this world. But it also shows us that uh, it is not where you work, it is what you do. And yes. if you do it from the heart, you will find some other hearts that will meet yours. And those hearts you meet here at Inspire to Live? Absolutely. Uh, it's very, very, I've been to very big conferences, mm -hmm. very, very big conferences of cancer. But this one is remarkable for two things. One is that it is small. But Which is like? Everybody here is inspired and inspiring. So I've not had anybody in this conference talk about themselves. It has been about the patients and the people that they are working for. And is that different than other big conferences that people mainly speak about themselves? Absolutely, because as a scientist, as a medical doctor, as a professor of oncology, I know that we go to conferences to show off. <laughs> And uh, we try to show off things that we are doing, only the good side, that we've managed to do this and that and that. That and we therefore, are proud of. Precisely. We are trying to sell our centers and our institutions and our It has that to do with, with, let's say, interests and funding? It is interest and funding, because remember that in a lot of conferences these mm -hmm. days, mm -hmm. you are sponsored by a pharmaceutical company. Who are also present. Who are also present. So, so you need to show off. You need to show, to show not only yourself off, but show them off. Yeah. So the interest is never really the patient. I understand. And that makes this different. Absolutely different. Here it is about the patient. But even more important is that it's not just about the patient we reach. It is the millions that we don't reach. Yes, because after you've been rewarded this morning, you gave a lecture yeah. about your work in Kenya. And you told us about your daily experience that people who have cancer in Kenya have a totally different experience to the ones in the Netherlands. And of course, in the Netherlands, they are misfortunate. But in Kenya, if I hear your lecture, I was in awe. How is that for you, hearing these experiences all over the world and coming from a country where these experiences are so much different? Well, I, uh, as an oncologist, I graduated as an oncologist in 1990. So I've had all these years. And when you graduate from some of the best institutions in the world that are giving the best care possible, and then you go back home and struggle to, number one, establish the service. And number two, improve it, hopefully to the level of where you are trained. Then you know how formidable a task is it, it is. But even more important, because the large majority of our patients are late cases, you are not going to cure them. But you have to make them as comfortable as possible. And I've seen and I've experienced it, that it can be extremely draining you can have what we call the burnout syndrome. Because when every morning, every evening, every day, you go back to see people who you can't completely help. 
and you talk to their relatives and you look at their pain, you may know what you can do if you had all the facilities, but you don't have the facilities. And when you have discovered it earlier, at an earlier stage? Any cancer discovered early is manageable. Yes, but Especially here it takes a long days. time. And you explained this morning how, how come. Precisely. And that was striking to see. And that is where we must start focusing in the right place. Right. Because it's not just a question of getting good, expensive treatment centers if you can't get people early. So it's the early prevention and right? early diagnosis yes. must be the focus. And for developing countries, that is where we must be. Your, your message was loud and clear. That I needs hope, to be done. I hope it was clear. Because it came across the whole hall was silent when you, you spoke. You know, what happens is that when we are specialists, we tend to focus on our area of specialty. So you only see the patients who come to you. Yes. So you want the next big radiotherapy equipment, the next big surgery. But remember, if you do surgery, you only treat one patient. But there are 10 who don't come to you. And it's difficult always to turn focus on the people who have missing the opportunity of the care that you give. And turning that one out, you know, it's like a funnel. You know, a funnel. You, you know, there is a mass of people that you don't precise, get to see. Precise. How do you deal with that personally? It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. You pray, but at the same time, you also need a support group. I've come to realize that you can't do it alone. You need the support of your family. You need the support of the relatives of your patients. You need the support of your patients. You need the support of colleagues. The dealing with the yes. emotions that come along with yes. it. Yes, yes. You need counseling yourself. Yeah. yeah. So it is a, a learning and a win-win if both of them are balanced. Okay. Yeah. Imagine, imagine this, that the patients whom you saw in January, most of them are dead by now because they came in late. That's your reality. That's your reality. And that reality is devastating. Yes. Yeah. But from what I heard here, something that's also, is that sometimes you end up being one of the patients. That you, as a doctor, you can also have the cancer. It happened to a few people it's present happened. There will be a few colleagues here who have had through that. Because when you're sitting on the other side of the table and advising, it's easy. When it is you, first of all, you don't know who is going to advise you. And number two, you don't want to be advised. Yes. And number three, you focus on the worst outcome, not on the positive one which you are preaching to your patients. Yes. So it's a very, very difficult situation. Yeah. yeah. Looking at what has been exchanged those three days here, what are the things that you take home? First of all, inspiration. On that, it requires absolute commitment and empathy with the patient. Be one of them. Put yourself in their place. But most important is that you should never quit. Never give up. Things will change. Things are gonna change. It might not be in my lifetime, but I must set that stage for the next generation to change it. And finally and most important, not all solutions fit the same problem. For us in the developing world in Africa, we have to look for a different model because our problems are not the same as where Europe is. It took you a long time to get here. We can't just leapfrog to the context in which it's done. We have bigger population. Kenya, my country, we have 55 million people. And what I hear from you this morning yeah. with your lecture, it's also a different culture. Absolutely. And the acceptance of having cancer and acknowledging the fact that you have cancer and showing it and sharing that with your family, relatives, people in your village is not that easy for no, people. That's very, very different. And that is a reason why it's just not diagnosed, right? Part of it, because you know, 
cancer equals death. The yes, word sir. cancer equals death. I don't think that anybody goes around the village saying I'm dying tomorrow. So if you tell them I've cancer, it's like you're telling them I'm dying tomorrow. So, so they, just, they, they just keep silent. Yes, because there are a lot of people who are depending on you. All right. They're relying on you. They so you make them scared by... You yeah. scare them completely. Imagine if there was a child who was going to school and the only one who's paying the tuition for the child. And the year that next year you may not be there. The child may even drop out of school. So sometimes you keep it not because of you, but because of the people around you. Yes. How do they receive the message? Yes. So that, that, that is one how you showed so very clearly this morning precise. with chairs. Yes. You say well, that's one of the chairs that's empty. Yes. And that's one of the reasons why it's just not diagnosed. It is not. And so it is true in a way that people that come to you, they may well be dead in a year because of that. Only because Most of, of them are dead yeah. in a year. And that's why I was so keen on those empty chairs. Yes. And if you're going to help, which chair do you occupy? Because you can't sit in all of them. So you need a group that covers the other chairs where you are not. And it is not enough to be in only one chair. Yes, you need them all. You need them all. Yeah. Yeah, but you can't be in all of them. Yeah, the metaphor was very, very clear. I hope people got that. Yes, I yeah. do think so. Because if you are clear. in the last chair of palliative care, but you are not in the first chair of uh, the uh, community when they... Sharing. Yes. Yeah. You will never see the patient. True. Yeah. True. So inspiration is what you take home? I take home great inspiration that there are others who think the way I do. Yeah. You take I, home your award? I take home my award, of course, very proudly. Will you put this on the wall? Oh, not just in the wall. I'll put it on the road. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> yes, I wish it was a big banner so that I can hang it across uh, the road. They can provide that to you. They can provide that. Yes. Well, I, I actually, they one. already did. The, it's uh, in the background. No, I'll put a pole on one side and a pole on the other and put the big thing on there. <laughs> you don't see the person to me that is like really showing <laughs> off, but I can understand it. It makes you proud. If it inspires others. Yes. Because I don't see this as the end of the road, I see it as the beginning. Yes, yeah. yes. And just to conclude this conversation, I'm curious if you look at the development in your field of work, cancer, over the years that you've been active in this and you've been doing so much in all these years, what's the biggest achievement that you look back on in your field? If I look at it from my country and from my continent, it has been the number of young people, the next generation, that we have encouraged to join oncology. Uh, when I was trained, I was the second gynae oncologist in the whole of East Africa. Right now, we have tens and going into hundreds. And these are people at there. Number two, oncology was not a very sexy area to go into. It was more sexy to be a cardiologist and be the things like those. Now people are beginning to realize that oncology is an important area and it really is a future where, where it is. But I've also been encouraged by the introduction of more science and easier technology. Like you saw the presentation today yes. on using blood yeah. to make a diagnosis over many cancers. Those rapid tests. The rapid tests are important because you remember I told you that there are people who are waiting for biopsy for six months. Yes. Then the result doesn't come back. So when you have rapid tests that can give you results. You know, the same instantly. Day, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That would make a big difference. Yes, I understand yeah. that. So those developments I think are extremely important. More but doctors and quicker more, diagnosis. I don't even want to say doctors, I say more caring people, whether they are nurses. All right. that. Right. Two is the use of technology. Yes. And I'm particularly keen on how we can use the cell phone, the uh, mobile telephone. That's a wonderful thing. And that, you never I thought of that, but I heard this. That's something that yes. we must use more. Yes. So that we communicate with patients better, more intimately, get results, 
People don't have to travel many miles if they can consult, get somebody to talk to immediately. I think that's where we will make a big bang. I agree with you, because that was an insight to me as well, hearing that the cell phone, such an easy thing as just a phone, can make such a difference. Absolutely, in this field. absolutely. Thank you so much. You need to fly back soon, back to Kenya. And uh, it was wonderful speaking with you, having the chance to sort of conclude a bit of what you've been doing and after this reward that, to me, it seems is very, very well reserved. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much. Uh, unfortunately, I'll be taking the good weather with me back to Nairobi. So you will get back to your usual Amsterdam. <laughs> We're used to it.